If you're new to Linux and are wondering if Linux is ready for gaming, the short answer is yes. You may have heard of Valve Steam Deck, and that device is powered by Linux. Plus, all of the compatibility work that Valve does for the Steam Deck carries over to the Linux desktop. So the answer is absolutely yes. But, yeah, there's a but. But, always a but. Linux is not supported by every game because some game publishers have trouble with making good decisions. So if there's a specific game that you need and it doesn't work on Linux, either through Steam's Proton or through something like Lutris, then Linux might not be for you. Linux has tons of benefits over Windows, and Microsoft keeps adding more and more reasons to switch to Linux, like the insane idea of Windows Recall. Thanks, Microsoft, for giving people the single greatest reason to switch from Windows to Linux ever with Recall, because I bet a lot of people are not very happy with the idea of Microsoft tracking everything they do on their system. Now, despite the great Linux positive decisions that Microsoft has made with Recall, unfortunately, not all game publishers are willing to support Linux just yet. If you are part of a game publisher, I'm making a video just for you. So if you want to know why not developing for Linux is just throwing away money, then subscribe. For my fellow gamers, I'm recording this in November 2024. The current amount of playable games for Linux just on Steam, either natively or through Proton, is over 15,000 games. This will continue to grow as more game companies realize the value of supporting the Linux market, and there will be some that work but haven't been tested yet, so as testing continues, the amount of playable games will continue to grow. In fact, Steam has a dedicated section of the store to highlight games with Linux support. Now, for those who are wondering why Linux doesn't have support for some games, some people think that Linux should support every single game that's ever been made. And that's kind of silly because of the fact that if you look at the consoles, they have exclusives that are only available on PlayStation and only available on Xbox. So if a game is not supported on Linux, it doesn't mean Linux is bad. It means that the developer is bad for not giving support to Linux. I mean, they don't have to. It's obviously their choice. But at the same time, there is reason to do it. And I'll have a video on that very soon. For those who don't know what Proton is, basically it's a compatibility layer that makes it possible for games using Windows specific protocols to be automatically translated into Linux compatible protocols. So even if a game has never intended to be played on Linux, it just might. In fact, while Proton was made to be used in Steam, Proton is not exclusive to Steam, so other tools can use Proton as well. Lutris, for example, has the ability to use Proton. And speaking of Lutris, Lutris is one of the other ways to run games on Linux. And there's also the Heroic Games Launcher, Humble Bundle, and more. Now, Lutris is a video game preservation platform with the goal of keeping your video game collection up and running. Lutris provides emulators, compatibility layers, and game engine re-implementations to run games on Linux, and in some cases, the experience is even better than on the original platform. Heroic Games Launcher is a free and open source uh, game launcher for Epic Games, GOG, and Amazon Prime Games. It is an alternative to the Epic Games Launcher and the GOG Galaxy, and it is focused on privacy, using fewer resources, and supporting a range of tools such as Wine, Proton, Crossover, DXVK, and VKD3D. At this point, it is likely that the game you want to play is on Steam and is labeled as verified or playable through Proton. And if that's not the case, then it's probably possible to play it with one of the other methods. These tools work on basically any Linux distro, so it doesn't really matter which one you choose for gaming as long as your hardware is supported by that distribution. You should be just good to go. With that said, there are also distros made specifically for gaming, like Nobara, Bazite, Draugr, and others. These distros make alterations to the base distribution they are made from for the purpose of improving performance and the overall experience with a gaming-centric focus. Now, personally, I've been fine with just using regular distros for my gaming, but if you want to check out the gaming-centric distros, then I say go for it. But keep in mind, some of the performance-focused distros aren't as user-friendly as the more mainstream distributions. If you are new to Linux and are struggling to pick your first distro, I get it. It's okay. There's a lot to choose from, and I made a video specifically about this if you want to check that out. You'll find a link in the description. Now, for those of you who think I'm biased and are going to say that gaming on Linux is fine, you know, just because I like Linux and I've been using it for so long, 
I just want to make it clear. Gaming on Linux used to be a desert. So when you switched to Linux, you'd have to say basically goodbye to gaming. And I did that many, many years ago. But that hasn't been the case for well over a decade. I did my full switch to Linux during the desert area. So I've experienced the gaming drought and the evolution of Linux becoming a gaming oasis. These days, Linux is a great platform for gaming, even with the few gaps of companies not clever enough to support our system. But there are some games that aren't going to work regardless of what you try because the developers or the publishers are ridiculous. For example, League of Legends used to work on Linux perfectly fine thanks to Lutris, but Riot Games decided to break Linux support by creating their own in-house Windows-only anti-cheat which they require gamers to have in order to play, effectively forcing users to install a rootkit to have access to a game and that rootkit having access to everything on your computer. You can check out this video right here for more info on the rootkit. I'll have it linked in the description. There, there are going to be instances like this where the developers or publishers themselves don't let it work, but most of the time, most of the time, Games just work these days in Linux. If you're thinking about switching to Linux and are watching this to find out if it's ready for gaming, then I'd say yes, depending on which games you want to play. You can check for the Steam Deck support on Steam for your games or uh, check on the database from uh, ProtonDB and also Lutris to see the status of compatibility with various games. If you are new to Linux and are unsure what distro you should start with, well, that depends on your technical skill level. Many gamers are used to messing with various files and configurations in order to get their games to play properly. Because even though most games are made for Windows, there are still times where gamers have to go through a bunch of headaches to make them work on Windows. So if that describes you and you've dealt with that, then you can pretty much use most of the options. You could try Fedora or one of the gaming-centric distributions. If you're new to Linux and maybe gaming is something that you want to do, but it isn't the most important thing for you to have, and you're more looking for something that is like the least amount of friction for beginners, then I suggest checking out this video because here I answer the most asked question of all time, which Linux distro should I start with? So whether you're a gamer or not, this can help as well. So here you go. Check it out. 